Good morning. Good morning to you, Wayne. We will see you right here at this desk. As always on Fridays at 1130 Eastern. But right now it is time to skip the BS time for Undisputed. Time to talk Bill Belichick with two former NFL stars who believe he's the GOAT. A lot of people do. Keyshawn Johnson, Michael Irvin, good morning to both of you. Good morning, man. Happy uh, Friday, Skip. Happy Friday. Uh, Hold that thought. You may not think it's so happy when I get finished with all this, but we'll see how you react. It is time to react to some potent quotes from Tom Brady's father, who did not hold back when asked by the Boston Globe about Bill Belichick. Brady Sr. said, Bill is tough. He runs a military system. It's a different generation. Bill is a great, great, great coach. Three greats. But his interpersonal skills are horrible. That's the bottom line. How many times has he said back to 15 or 16, as in 2015 or 16, that he wanted to win without Tommy? When he went without Tommy, he didn't know what he was losing. You're losing more than just a quarterback. Ego sometimes gets in the way of things. I think it did with Bill. Now he's in a situation where he's gotten crucified for the last few years by everybody, and a lot of luster has come off his robes. Well, apparently so. Now seven head coaching openings have been filled, and no doubt uh, Bill Belichick going 0 for 7 was considered by all seven, interviewed by at least a couple that we know of. Yesterday, it was reported that Belichick was under consideration for the Washington job that, of course, went to Dan Quinn. So, Keyshawn, Mm -hmm. your reaction to what Brady's father said and to Belichick not getting any of these seven open jobs? Well, let's let's start here, Skip. First of all, I I don't know. I've never been in the military, so I don't know what military style is because I've never been in the military. Neither okay, have no, 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 no. I, I don't. Yes. I don't. I don't. I know what tough. Although you hard, you played for a coach who was I, militaristic. I right? know what right. tough, hard yeah. coaching mm-hmm. is. That's what I do know. Secondly, we all protect our kids, no matter what the situation is. For those that have kids, we we protect them. We are with them, no matter what they do. One hundred percent. They are yeah. never at fault. Period. That's just the reality of it. Now, my relationship is different with Bill Belichick than many other people around. No doubt. It just is. I mean, his interpersonal skills are horrible. I mean, to some, they they certainly are. I've had a laugh or two with with a steak or two with him. You have. I've sat at the Mets games with his kids. Yeah. The way we communicate is a little bit different. Fair point. So his son, obviously have had some communication in the past with his dad about Tom, Tom, and, Tom, Tom, and yes. Tom Brady Jr. Jr. And Many times if you said Jr., I never really yeah. heard Jr. Yeah. I just always hear Tom Brady. But they have had some communication about Belichick's communicating skills with his players yeah. and his coaches. Yep. There's no question about no it. No doubt. So he's taking that, and he's going with that. Or whether or not Bill has seen Mr. Brady through – the tunnel or whatever, and he basically waved him and kept it going. A lot of coaches are that way. I'm not taking up for Bill. Bill, Bill, what you got to understand about these guys, Skip, is all they know is football. And all they care about is football. Any other extracurricular activities other than golf and studying football, they don't care. (laughs) They don't want to talk to you about nothing else except football. And if you're not part of their staff and you're not part of the inside of the building, Mm -hmm. they don't give a damn. All of them. Jimmy Johnson, Bill Parcells, Sean Payton, Mike Tomlin, you name them. Tony Judge, all of them. Yeah, that old school. They don't want to hear any anything. T- Tony's a little more broader. Like, he, he has more scope to him than yeah, the but others he, but do. He, he does because he, that's just his – he was a player. He grew up. But yeah. at the end of the day, and, he want to talk football. Yeah. And, and, and Tony just, has other re- responsibilities. And he has, yeah, he has yeah, other responsibilities. African-American and yes. all of those yeah, things. It's a little so bit, he has to speak out yeah. more. It's a little bit different. Now, all – Good, great coaches need players to succeed, okay? Right. Bill Parcells wouldn't be Bill Parcells if it wasn't for 56 coming off that damn edge and Phil Sims delivering the football 
okay? And Mark Bavaro catching it. Let's be honest with ourselves mm -hmm. here. Okay, Jimmy Johnson wouldn't be Jimmy Johnson if he didn't have Barry Sanders at Oklahoma. Oh, no, State. not Barry. Uh, 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 Thurman uh, Thomas. Was it Thurman? Thurman Thomas. Thurman yeah. Thomas mm -hmm. at Oklahoma State. Hey, yeah. And Michael yeah. Irvin at Miami and Troy and Emmitt mm -hmm. and Michael at the Dallas Cowboys. Because mm -hmm. when he got to the Miami Dolphins, he was a playoff coach. Mm -hmm. he, wasn't, he was still a championship coach, but he didn't have the same type of players. So I hate when people say, well, he couldn't win without Tom Brady. Yeah, it's easy to see that they struggle without having a quarterback that could get the job done. Right. Jimmy did make the playoffs in Miami. No, I said yeah, a playoff. Yeah, yeah, he was right, a playoff right. coach yes, is what so I said. Yes, he was. Okay. But you know what I'm saying, right. like, Skip. you got to have yeah. great players that yeah. end the deal. Nobody wins a Super Bowl without Hall of Fame great players on the team, man. Have, have, do you know any teams that's won any Super Bowls without any Hall of Famers? No. You're going to need some players. <laughs> you need some, some players. Some players. And I understand players. Mr. Brady Sr. I get it. Right. I get it, man. Bill, yes. Bill is like a rock to people. He's just a rock right. with no mouth, no nothing. That's just who he is. He don't know you. He don't deal with you. He's just, that's what it is. I, that's what it is. Now, to the coaching standpoint of it, real mm -hmm. quick, he interviewed for a couple quiet jobs. Mm -hmm. He made some decisions that the Atlanta job wasn't really, they, they couldn't meet. Okay, they wanted him in Washington. A few of the, the, the head people in Washington wanted to hire him. Sounded like it. At the yeah. end of the day, yeah. he just, it didn't fit. So he's going to sit on the sideline, he's going to recharge his battery, and then he's going to make another run at it. Maybe he's the Dallas Cowboy coach next year. You never Who know. Knows? Yeah. Who knows, Michael? Yeah, I, 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 that, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. And, and let me tell you something. I want to echo what you talked about on the football field. You need those players. Gotta have them. And, and, and fortunately for Bill and, and also fortunately for Tom, I thought the marriage was perfect because of how Tom played and how he coached. You know, Tom was great late. He's a disciplinary coach. So your great late has a chance to flourish if everybody's disciplined. No jumping off sides, everybody playing is focused all the way down. So we got to see the greatest part of Tom because of Bill. We got to see the best part of Bill because of Tom. They do commingle. Now, let me tell you something. I think Andy Reid, and I talked about Andy Reid, is just a phenomenal coach. Andy Reid did four straight years in the NFC Championship game. Took four straight years. Never won a Super Bowl. Then came over here and went five straight years to the AFC Championship game. Six. <laughs> You're right. I'm Six. five at home. Five yeah, at home, home, I mean. Yeah. Six. And, and now he's won a Super Bowl. Why do you think he won a Super Bowl? Two Super Bowls. Because he got that dude, number 15. And the rebound coaching, great. Donovan McNabb been having some good players, great players. But he hasn't won a Super Bowl until he got that dude 15. So, so great coaching and great quarterback. When you can get it together, you got something special. And they need each other. I believe what, what, what Brady Sr. said is real. It's right. And, and, it's, and it's apropos for right now because the truth is what Bill was worked with us. Yeah. Worked with oh, yeah. us. We were coming from hard places. So we don't mind being coached hard. It all worked. We wanted somebody to look into us and see something great and pull that out of us. And that's what those hard coaches, the Bill Parcells, the Bill Belichicks, the Jimmy Johnsons, that's what they did. They were taking us from hard places. So, so but now these dudes, these kids, can't talk to them like that. You can't talk with, you, you know, you, you got to communicate with them. You can't just... B.A., you can't just come down on them and expect to produce the best out of them. They don't function like that. And the more and more I hear people talking like this about Bill, the more I say, he didn't get a job this year, and, and there were a lot of defensive coaches hired. A lot of defensive coaches hired. If something doesn't happen by, the, by, by next year, then, then we've seen the last. That, that, I would echo you that. I would probably yeah, say two years out, Skip, at his age. Yeah. yeah. Probably, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. So, so, yeah, but, but, but to me, no doubt, he, he, he's still the greatest. And I know we'll talk about what he's done with, what he hasn't done without Tom Brady. 
But for the era he came up in and what, what he did and his inventions and the defensive schemes, he, he's just simply the GOAT. Okay. I hear both of you. I respect both of you. You, you made deep, valid points, both of you. Now I'm going to remake my points. I've given you, this is the greatest defensive mind we have ever seen. I give you the disciplinarian that impacted great late because you're exactly right. You have to be a disciplined football team, unlike our football team this year, which led the league, the, the whole National Football League in penalties. That means you, they're non-disciplined. That is correct. Right. right. And that eats at my psyche because it's wrong, wrong, wrong. You can't win big that way. So I give you those two things had to be right for Tom to be in position to be great late. And all he did in those six Super Bowls was win, win all six of them with a game-winning drive in the fourth quarter or overtime, of course, of the Atlanta comeback game. Okay, so now let's step back and look at what happened to Bill Belichick. Who is he and what is he? Let's look harder. Let's step back and do bigger picture of Bill Belichick. He starts off in Cleveland, and he is a losing football coach four of five years. And he got fired because of that in Cleveland. Then he goes to New England. And the first year in New England, they go 5-11 and 11 with Drew Bledsoe at quarterback, as you well know. And then they start off the following year 0-2 with Drew Bledsoe at quarterback, as both of you know. So if I add that up... That means at that point, when Tom Brady fell out of the sky into his lap at that point, because he had no, he, he goes to Brady and then you both have made the point. He stuck with Brady. God bless him for that. That was a monumental, right. correct decision. Right. Right. But at that point, as a head football coach in the National Football League, he was 35 and 45 pre-Brady. OK, 35 and 45 is not great. No. I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. He, he was just a pretty good football coach. You could see the, the discipline. You could see they competed. You could see that they had one good year in Cleveland. But that's yeah. all, just one good year out of, now we're going on seven years. So it's starting into the seventh. And I know an assistant on that staff that I spoke to who said, I think it's about time to put my house up for sale here in Foxborough because they thought they were going nowhere slowly until the sixth rounder happened out of heaven. And you know, the, the rest is history. The tuck rule game, you were there for it. And then the late drive in the Super Bowl, but, but it was, the, the, you could argue it's the greatest defensive game plan, the greatest defensive strategy in the history of the Super Bowl was the upset that they pulled off in Tom's first Super Bowl over the St. Louis Rams greatest right. show on turf. Right, right, right. Okay, so then history happens with Brady. And then Bill decides he is the reason. That's what Tom Sr. is saying. Bill decided I'm, I'm the reason for, for who we are. And Tom has hit the wall and he's done. And obviously there's a big ESPN bombshell a couple of weeks back. That, that's what Tom Sr. is talking about here because he's saying that it was going all the way back to 15 and 16 that Bill is already telling <coughs> Robert Kraft, he's, he's, get, he's getting close to finish. We got to go a different direction. Hence, Jimmy Garoppolo, right? And finally, convinced Robert Kraft, let's just push him off into the sunset, out the back door. And, and it, it, as he said, it galls Robert Kraft. There's another quote I didn't read. Uh, Robert Kraft says, uh, you know, told Tom Sr., he just said to me, I, I made I a mistake. Yeah, his yeah, yeah. Right. I didn't make, you know, I, I didn't make the right decision because it galls Robert Kraft that Tommy went elsewhere and won a championship because obviously in the pandemic year, he went to Tampa and took a seven and nine team and they won the Super Bowl. OK, so then what happened? Bill got his chance to show who was the real reason and. There's four years after that, four more years without Tom Brady, and he goes 28 and 39, which is right on par with what he was pre-Brady, 28 and 39, and they make it to the playoffs one time, and they get smoked at Buffalo and give up 47 points and never make Josh Allen punt, not one time. And then I look back at two of Brady's losses in Super Bowls, and to me, I pin it on Belichick, even though they got to this point, as you both point out, in the game. But after Brady did what, what he always does, and he drove him down against Eli in the first Super Bowl against the Giants and scored a touchdown with two minutes left on a touchdown pass to Randy Moss. Now it's 14-10 to 10, New England, 
And Eli goes 80 yards, 80 yards. It took a lucky helmet catch. Helmet. Yeah, okay. But but he goes 80 yards. They they needed a touchdown. They didn't need a field goal. They had to go score at least, you know, more because it's a four-point game. And he hits Plaxico with whatever it was, 15 pump. seconds left, yep. and wins the game. Oh, no. And and so Tom did what Tom always does, and then Bill's defense just couldn't stand up to Eli Manning. Mm -hmm. And then – in the Eagles Super Bowl, it's Nick Foles, the backup quarterback, and somehow they score 41 on Belichick's defense. And Tom throws for an all-time playoff record 505 and hangs 33 on a top five defense, but it's not enough because they lose 41 to 33. Well, I put that more on Bill. So so I'm saying he he got exposed, and that's why Tom Sr. is saying he's gotten crucified for the last few years by everybody. Because a lot of luster has come off the road. It's, it's real easy to kick somebody when they down, and, and it looks as though it's Tom Brady. But you just ran off a couple things there, Skip, and I'll let you finish because I'm, yeah. I'm listening to you. I, and, and maybe you do, Michael, and maybe you do, Skip. But I don't know any coach that comes in and becomes a head coach in a national football that league. That wins right away. What, did I ask you to, to, to fill I'm in sorry, the blank? I'm sorry. Did I ask you to I, fill in the blank? I was thinking blank? the same thing, right? <laughs> I don't know you any coach, right. Skip. And he was turning that, Cleveland. That, 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 he was turning Cleveland. He was turning them, and it was crazy with Art Modell and all. You <laughs> right. know that. But, but he go fill in the blank. You know, well, but, we're we're going to talk about Jim Harbaugh in a few minutes. You right. know what? When he stepped into the 49ers, but here's what I'm going to say. The 49ers was a different organization, different place, just like what the Chargers are right now for jump. Yes. For jump, for jump. But you take in a dog of a team in Cleveland yeah. that hadn't won anything no, since Jim had. Brown. Right. Okay? Yeah. They're right. trying to get it turned around. Was turning and then eventually... They, they had a couple of moments, but go ahead. He, yeah, you you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I they did. had a couple of moments with Ernest Biner and them mm. and all. I get that. But I'm talking about, I don't know any coach, though, Skip, that hits the ground running and then it just goes from there and they ain't never going to have a losing season. Even Bill Parcells had losing seasons. Yeah. And he's, one of, he's a Hall of Famer. It happens. Secondly, you made me forget my, my thought. You, you talked about the Atlantas and all of those things about Bill and his defense. And do what about Seattle and what about the Rams? Tom Brady didn't win those games. Bill defense beat the Rams. Bill defense beat Seattle. So okay. if you want to go right. team okay. for team uh, Super Bowl, and, and hold, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, real yeah. quick on the Seattle game. They're down 24 to 14 going to the fourth quarter. And Tom Brady throws for 124 right. on the Legion of Boom that, in the that, that, fourth that, quarter that, that, and fine. two touchdowns. That's fine. And okay. Josh McDaniels is just right. calling the plays. Okay. Right. okay, so let's let's be okay. let's be fair. Right, right. right. Okay, it, he it, dialed it, that up and said, this is what they're gonna do. We studied this film here for the last two weeks. When you see him in this formation and they're in a tight split, he's gonna come underneath and he's gonna do that and pick you. I need you to jump in Michael Butler. That's Guess what? Brilliance of okay, that, that's the that brilliance was. of it. Oh, okay. it you was. have to give credit to it, though, Skip. Yeah. I understand that he burns a lot of people, right. mm -hmm. but because at the end of the day, his personality is as dry as a right. bone. That's it. But you oh, got to be. But, but, but that's not true. Also, guys. Everybody I know that knows him say he's funny. You they, know, like they, he's. That's he's they know everybody, him. They know like him. I said, when yes, you're sitting you at the him. table yeah. table no, with him no, and having dinner, right. yeah. yeah. But if you but if you watch him, funny. No. if you watch him at the podium he's and doing a presser, it's like, oh, man, get this dude off my TV. He's not funny. He doesn't even try to be funny. Don't try to be. He doesn't try to be funny. He's not funny. He's just him. Him. He's just That's him. It. He really is. It's how, just how he is. Now, interesting on some of the stuff you said, Skip, because his pattern of success has been clear. He's always tried to get rid of players a year before. Yeah. Prior to. Lawyer Malloy. They'll fall Drew off. Bledsoe, but now, now, now. Are, do some of those guys still have the ability to play? Yes. They still Branch. have the ability to play. Right, right. Richard Seymour. I can just go on and on. Yeah, and, and, and I thought even then, and we talked about even Willie then, McGinnis. That, that's going to come back and get him when it came down to, to, to the quarterback. And it did. It came back and get him. Got him when it came down to Tom Brady. But what I also don't think we give him enough credit for is Tom Brady was in the midst of going up against a Peyton Manning. 
That was his defense that was giving Peyton Manning fits. We don't know that Tom would have beaten Peyton Manning if, if Bill Belichick with that defense didn't do the things they he did when the, he took they, they those receivers the rules. out. Yep. They changed you know what the I mean? Rules Absolutely, because, of that. because he was so physical. So so all this right now in this whole time where we got Tom Brady clearly over Peyton Manning, I don't know that that necessarily would have been the reality if you had a regular I'm calling him a regular or normal yep. uh, uh, any other head coach that's any other defensive coordinator. And we got to be able to measure these two. Key said treat them fairly. I don't say treat them fairly. Fairly says giving everybody the same thing. I'm saying treat them just mm. because he's the only one that has done what he has done. So I'm going to treat him just and give him his justice. Okay. He's the guy. Right. So. Tom Sr. says Bill didn't know what he was losing. And Tom, I buy that. Because that, that I've said true. for I buy years, that. for years, I buy that. that Tom was the buffer in the locker room between the true. militaristic coach, the disciplinarian, the hard ass yeah. coach, all yeah. those things. Because Tom was constantly in the locker room saying, it's okay, it's okay. Right, we yeah, got it's it. just, just tune we got it out. It. It's right, okay. Right, we're right, we're going right. to be okay. We're going to figure this one out. Yeah. Yep. And once you lose your buffer, because People are listening to Tom Brady in the locker room because he keeps backing well, he, it up. At, at the end, he was really the 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 the, the mm. last standing original he was. dynasty mm. patriot guy okay. from the beginning. So he understood just it's noise. It's just noise. We'll be right. fine. Right. Okay. And when you have veterans like that that understand the pulse of their coaches, they mm. can now speak to other people and say. Okay. But, but what else I thought it was great is also, and, and I remember hearing guys, William again, saw him talk about this. Tom was emotionally the, 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 the fire. The fire. Yeah. While Bill is, hmm. Yeah. So all the, let's go, all that fire. Nobody else was really, nobody else felt free enough to, to show that kind of fire. Yeah. When I was talking to guys before the game, they were afraid to talk, so I know they were afraid to yell, they were afraid to say anything. Absolutely. Bill had them all <laughs> militaristic, yeah. on that militaristic yeah. style. But Tom, Tom brought a little fun in the locker room, loosened the locker room up. It, that, that's the part I think he says, he, it's one thing if you have the heart and soul, but if you got that at the quarterback yeah. position, that's the key. Yeah. element you got on your okay. football team. Scared to walk on eggshells. <laughs> right. And everybody was scared. Everybody okay. was scared. So Tom Sr. says it's a different generation. You alluded right. to this. I think the decision makers at these teams that needed a head coach are saying, thing. wait a second. It's a different year. It's you a know, different he time. He was great in his time, in his but time. will he be great in our time? Right. For our team, our younger team, as, as, as he's right. bringing it up. Right. When, when you look at the last four years, it's hard to sell Bill Belichick post Tom Brady. And unless you say, well, can he bring Tom with him? Well, obviously, right. no, he can't bring Tom with him. And so I think they all said, well, he wants some portion of control in the front office as far as input into the, the selection of players. And he's going to be difficult to get along with, especially at the ownership level, because he's always kind of stiff armed the owner. So. What's the point? And I think they all said, let's just go younger. Let's just tr try these, uh, you know, upcoming well, assistant coaches. And you know what I think happened? I, what I think played a role, huge role in the decision-making process really is not not having Tom, but what had happened to Matt. The process of how you handle yeah. that Mac quarterback Jones. situation yep. Yeah, he, he completely screwed that. Prop probably has him in this situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if, even if, if, if Mac Jones like had, what's he that? He recognized he screwed that up. Right, and tried to fix and tried to correct. He recognized right, he screwed correct. it up. Right, and tried to correct it. But, but that, 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 I think that's the one thing that will probably keep him All right, So you, you can laugh or scoff at this if you want, but I tweeted last night sort of half tongue in cheek. The ultimate job for me with Bill Belichick is because he is close with Jerry if he would become the Cowboys defensive coordinator because he is the greatest ever at doing that. And you're, you, I said you were going to laugh, but I'm just saying if, if, if he would even yeah, do it stop, for a year, I'm, I'm just saying that's what he does greatest. You don't think he could do a great job with I the Cowboy sure defense? I'm up in there, yeah. and if he's going to come on in hey, there, cra well, hey. long, long as he's going. Are you crazy? Hey. He's not going to come as a defensive coordinator. Well, I know, but yeah. Uh, but like you said, if Mike McCarthy don't do what he needs to do, he may be the head coach. Okay, Since there Dan you go. Quinn now All right. in Washington. So speaking of Cowboys defensive coordinator, 
Um, no more Dan Quinn. Y'all crazy. The man. next coordinator should be, if not Bill Belichick, who? Bill. I'll go pick Bill up. Yeah, I'll come pick, I'll pick Bill him up. up. I'll crazy. go pick Bill up. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.